mentioned before that uh, the majority of the problems in an engine gas or diesel start for lubrication problems because you have lack of lubrication in some part. And uh, what is the immediate consequence when you have a lack of lubrication in that area? Friction. And uh, what happened after that? Heat. And metal with metal, destroyed. That's the problem. Oh, I have a little high temperature. Oh, my friend. If, if, the, if the needle of the temperature gauge move it a little up, you need pay attention immediately. No, but it's a little, Mr. Lopez, it's a little. You have a problem. You have a problem that is, is starting. No, I have that, that the needle a little higher two weeks ago and, and the car is, 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 is running perfect. The boat is running, mm -hmm. but it's not normal. What about the other engine? No, the other engine is normal, it's low. Mm. That's different, but it's perfect, Mr. Lopez. Okay. Never pay attention, call to me two weeks later. Oh, Mr. Lopez, the engine. <laughs> My friend, I say to you, if, if, the, if the temperature increase a little, it's because something is happening. And normally it's lack of lubrication. And now what is this? Oh, the solution right now is disassembly. <laughs> because something is broken internally. In a boat, those type of reparations are too expensive. Because we don't have a space to work. It's difficult. You remember we installed the gauge, the temperature gauge, the oil pressure gauge, fuel gauge. Yeah. Okay, but those two gauge, oil pressure and temperature gauge are critical gauge. You need to pay attention all the time to those gauge. This is why I recommend the analog gauge to see the movement of the, of the needle, yeah? And I need double gauge. Gauge on the console, on the pilot hand, and gauge in the engine room, in a small board per each engine. And you need to be familiarized with the position of the needles in both gauge. This is critical. All the problems in a boat start for a lack of lubrication. After that, that problem convert into friction and temperature and pam, pam, pam. This is the process, no? but it's lack of lubrication. And how, how I have suddenly in this boat, in this area, lack of lubrication. Why? A leak or bad service and the oil is dirt, the oil lose the properties and uh, now the lubrication is good as well? No. We run oil in this class with Danny and me you will learn how important are the oils. This is the oil recommended for the manufacturer for that engine. Be careful, this is the engine. No, my friend, because a friend of mine have a gallon, half of, oh. <laughs> this is not the oil for this engine. What is the recommendation for that engine? Is, is this specification, is 10W40, tan, 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 is that one. This is not 10W40, it's not, it's, 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 it's not the same, be careful with that. This is why right now you have low oil pressure in your engine. We are going to study the difference between synthetic, semi-synthetic, and mineral. Oh, the, oh synthetic is better, <laughs> my friend. Depends synthetic is good for that engine according with the manufacturer recommendation. But synthetic is not good for this. No, 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 you need to be careful. Oh, this is an old diesel engine. Probably this one recommend a straight only 40 yeah, this is the recommendation of that manufacturer. Oh, can I put synthetic because I have money? No, my friend. It's not because you have money. It's because this is the oil recommended for that engine. And this is the oil recommended for this engine. You can destroy this engine if you put the engine not appropriate. The secret is the lubrication. When you have lack of lubrication, you have friction. And when you have friction, finito, my friend. That's the, that's the most difficult part. This is why the service and the intervals recommended by the manufacturer are critical. I recommend always be a little conservative, less. Especially they recommend 7,000, we, we recommend 5,000. <laughs> it's better, you, you have engine for years. Be careful with those generic oils, with those generic uh, coolants, because this is not coolant. Yeah, this some of the oils are recycled. You don't want to recycle no. them. Later we are going to talk about that. Okay, guys, one important thing when, when you use the service manual, when you repair a diesel engine, when you calculate the engine, the capacity of the engine, 
uh, is uh, the concept of uh, horsepower, the concept of uh, torque, and uh, the concept of uh, viscosity. We are going to calculate the last laboratory, the last project is calculate size, the turbo for that engine, the engine that you are repairing. This is naturally aspirated engine, and uh, we are going to calculate the turbo to convert that engine in turbocharger. And, uh, and uh, you need to do the calculation according with the formula that I have in my book. I invent the formula, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice process. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we are, when we have the engine turbocharged, what, what do you think is the, the, the difference between this engine naturally aspirated, carbureted, <laughs> only air, atmospheric air, and this one turbocharged? Okay, of course, this one turbocharged produces more horsepower and of course produce more yeah, torque. torque. Yeah, ah, okay. If I install in this engine originally, naturally aspirated, and I install a turbo, right now this engine produce higher torque. What do you think about the motor mounts and the stringers? Be more, be stronger. Probably you need reinforce the stringers. Yeah. You know, in, 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 in big boats, they have the original stringers in fiberglass and they reinforce with the aluminum or stainless steel brackets for the new motor mounts. Because the new motor mounts are bigger. Okay, in that chapter, we are going to calculate the turbo and we are going to calculate the new motor mounts for, for the engine. Because that engine requires high, bigger motor mounts. And the reinforcement of, a, of a, the, the stringers. This is why it's important the concept of work and torque. What is the unit for work? Newton meter in metric is Newton meter. Foot pounds. And uh, what about in standard? Foot pound. Foot pound. Anybody follow me? And uh, what is the meaning of work? Is the energy, Over. my friend, Over. necessary to move this box for these distances? Yes. You understand? The energy that I need to move this box that distance. Ah, in other words, what is the formula for work? Ah, work is the force times distance. the distance. Ah, look, the force times the distance. This is why it's good. Ah. Ready? This is work. What about torque? What is the unit in metric? What is the difference between work and torque? Torque is rotational. Pay attention. Work is this. The distance, the force that I need the box, this distance. And torque is the force that I need to twist it, this one. Ah, it's basically the same, but torque is angular and work is linear ah the unit is the same is newton meter in metric and in a standard is foot pound ah the unit is the same but this one here the torque is force times times radius. guys times radius. radius and this one is force times Distance. Distance, linear. And radius, angular. Finito. This is the difference between torque and, and work. You remember uh, about the power? The power electrical? Electric power is, is in watts, no? Yeah. What about the mechanical power? Is in horsepower. You remember? But both of them is power. Unit of power. And uh, what is the. Uh, uh, the 746. It's used, no? Okay. What is the relation in between the electrical power and the mechanical power? One watt is equal to 700. One horsepower is equivalent to. 746 watts. 746 watts. No, guys? That's true? Yeah. 746 watts. Ah, OK. 
okay what is the meaning of that pay attention only imagine this you remember how you calculate in in a boat the capacity in watts of the AC panel pay attention suppose that I have a boat with the main breaker in the AC panel 60 amps and uh, the input power entering here the input power phase one and phase two is is 120 here and 120 here how much is the voltage entering in that boat 240 it's double phase is is 240 240 ah i have 240 volts and i have 60 amps how much is the power volts times intensity how much is the power of that boat 60 times 240 14 watt this is 15 kilowatt yes or no okay look i need in my boat according with the ac panel 15,000 watts. Yes or no? How much should be the capacity of the engine for that generator in horsepower? Pay attention. Remember, the generator is composed for the engine and the back end, the electrical part. The requirement in the AC panel is 15 kilowatts. How much should be the capacity of the engine for that generator? 20.1. Okay, if I have 15,000 watts, how much horsepower I need? Four. Okay, it's 20 horsepower. Yeah. 20 horsepower. This is the capacity of the engine, the minimum. Ah, this is the relation. This is why you need to know this information to calculate the other one. Other important formula that we are going to use in this, uh, in this, uh, in this class is the formula about, about, what is the formula for torque? For torque equals radius radius the radius in inches or the radius in meters feet this is why you have torque wrenches foot pounds and torque wrenches pounds inches no depending okay what is the relation between the torque and the horsepower torque should be equal to 52 52 times the horsepower and divided by RPM. The engine RPM. You remember that when I have RPMs in capital letters, is the RPMs of the engine. What happens if I have the RPMs in, are the RPMs of the transmission. Pay attention. This engine, the transmission, the gear ratio is two to one. And the Y open throttle, the Y open throttle of this engine is 3000 RPMs. At Y open throttle, how much are the RPMs of uh, the output chaff of the transmission? It's 1500, because it's two to one. That's okay? When I refer to the output chaff of the transmission, I refer to this. When I refer to the RPM of the engine, it's this. This is engine, engine RPM. That's okay, guys? That's, that's clear? True. And this is the formula that we are going to use to calculate the torque.